started uh, today's the August 7th, 2019 meeting of the uh, Planning Board and uh, we're all sort of what's the first item on the agenda? Just the public hearing for the Lorax Sustainable Development uh, Sustainable Okay. So uh, why don't those folks come forward and uh, begin their presentation. Thank you. This is uh, uh, Victoria Point project that we were in, I think it was April, to talk on a conceptual basis when we, when we came in at that point. We've, uh, we've worked out a lot of detail since, since we were here then. Uh, but this is an overview of where we're at. This is the old uh, former Bennett property, now known as Victoria Point. Uh, this is the Victorian home of the residents here. This is a carriage house that, that is going to be renovated into a, a, a single family dwelling. This is the large car barn that is going to be removed as part of the project. And then this shows kind of the uh, placeholders on, on where houses would likely go around around the site. Uh, it shows the, uh, the expanse of the, the river frontage. We've got uh, open space here and in the in front here are our two open space areas to fill our, our open space requirement. We have on uh, sheet S1, note 14, we go through our, our open space uh, zoning requirements to show uh, uh, how we come up with our, our yield that we do as far as starting off with, with total area, moving wetlands, steep slopes, and uh, working our way down to a allowable number of lots of 7.1 lots, which rounds down to, to seven lots as we proposed. Again, one lot being with uh, the existing uh, Victorian home, one that would contain the, the uh, uh, carriage house, and then five, five new building lots. Um, as part of the package, you have uh, C1, that looks at the infrastructure that's required to do, to do the project here. It's a, it's a short cul-de-sac of about 450 feet uh, from, from staff to end. As you go around, uh, it turns out to be a little a little over 650 in total length. But uh, uh, it has a grass island, and uh, um, we have drainage infrastructure that handles the cul-de-sac. Um, runoff with a little bioretention area in the center of the cul-de-sac. We have another, another little bioretention area there uh, that handles the runoff from, from the rest of the roadway. Uh, we are proposing uh, to extend uh, single water, municipal water that would come from a uh, main in Silver Street, come down and terminate in a hydrant, and we have services that are dedicated to each one of the homes, including uh, replacing the existing service to the Victorian that would be replaced with a new new service off of uh, off of the new main. The uh, utilities are proposed on the ground where we have a, a riser pole, an existing riser pole that we would use here out at Silver Street and come on the ground and we would feed uh, one transformer down uh, here between lots 19.5 and 19.6. We've got another transformer here that would, would service these lots and then a final transformer that feeds the existing home, uh, as well as 19-1, as, uh, that's just up off the page here. So we've got the, the underground electric telephone, we've got the city water. Um, we have proposed, uh, and we talked this morning, we met with the technical review group, we talked some things through as far as we are proposing a, a street light at, at Silver Street, where there's an existing pole, we would place a a new uh, head on that to uh, provide a, a street light right at the entrance. And then down at the cul-de-sac by this cluster of driveways, we're also proposing a, a new street light down there that would be more of a modern, uh, uh, the ever source calls it the ever uh, town and country style. It's a, more of a lantern look to it, more of a scale of a residential area as opposed to a telephone pole with of good COVID lights on, on the top. And uh, again, this morning at technical review, we talked about 
setting that up side of the right away so that could be uh, owned and maintained by the association. Uh, so it would be the responsibility of the town. As well, we talked about the fact that we've got, we've got the, uh, the street trees here. We have two trees per lot that we've proposed in addition to, to the existing trees that are on site. Uh, we do this without uh, uh, all this infrastructure, without clearing any of the existing trees that are out there. But we are adding street trees along here. And again, this morning we talked about the fact that those will be out of the right of way, so it will be on private property, not the responsibility of the municipality. Um, we talked about the uh, um, uh, fire retention areas and responsibility for maintenance on those. And again, that's something that the Homeowners Association would like to take care of and maintain the, uh, the uh, fire retention areas. They're, they're fairly maintenance free, but they do need annual maintenance, and that would be part of the Homeowners Association to, uh, to take care of those on, on an annual basis. And we would provide an additional easement to the, to the, to the town for this one here in case uh, the town needs to be able to do the work there. We would provide an easement for that. Um, and I think those are the main highlights of what we've been showing. Again, this is under the cluster regulations, the open space regulations, where we're able to maintain uh, this expanse of, of river frontage in common ownership by the Homeowners Association that is protected from for further development here. Uh, no more additional units can be constructed out here, as well as, as this front piece up here that keeps the aesthetic appeal of, of the estate property and the view of the existing homes. That, that was our goal with, with the, uh, the layout. We, since we saw you, we've been uh, to the zoning board on a couple of occasions to to pin down one building envelope over here on lot on lot 19-3 that we, we did receive a variance from the zoning board of adjustment to allow this this envelope this structure to be close uh, constructed 50 feet closer than the 250 that's required on the balance of the lots. So this lot here has a little enlarged envelope, so we're a little bit closer to the river river on that. Um, like I said, we did meet with technical review this morning. I think uh, most of the questions were uh, uh, ministerial in, in nature. We've got some, some drafting issues and things that we, we should clear up with the, the review engineer. I think all in all, we're, we're on the right track with the layout here. And certainly be happy to review that with you guys. And then Mr. Krebs uh, has done his review and, and recommended that we complete and ready for acceptance and hoping that uh, we're in a position that we can get that off the, off the table and get, get some progress. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, before any members uh, ask questions, then I'm going to... Yes, but if you don't mind, I think it might be prudent to review some of the issues that the technical review committee raised they're going to be, they're asking for some revisions and since the public, you know, it, it could weigh into the public's sure. questions and comments and also for this committee, this board, sure. to know too. Um, I would actually recommend that this board not consider this application to complete until you had a chance to read through both the covenant and the memorandum um, from the technical review committee and can digest that information and and Krebs has not um, had a chance to review this version of the proposal um, this this morning's meeting went really well um, I'll, um, starting with department heads the highway department really appreciated um, the cul-de-sac design because it's easier to plow they prefer for the center of cul-de-sacs to be paved but um, allowing for drainage in the center is going to help with storm water and um, that's certainly a worthwhile part of the project. The, the center will drain through um, a drainage between lots three and four, correct me if I'm wrong, that's which right. um, I might re recommend that the planning board go out and do a site review okay. before approval also and see site where walk. that site walk because um, it, it's going to drain off into the neighbor's property to the left, which may require an easement, and so we may want to have a look at that. 
Um, the fire department was there to echo the need for a cul-de-sac, and they appreciated that, and that there will be a fire hydrant at the end of the cul-de-sac. They have concerns about water pressure because the hydrants on Silver Street don't have good pressure, um, and the water department was there to um, to to also state the the benefit of having a, a, a fire hydrant at the end of the line. This will be the end of the service line, which will help water quality to be able to flush at the end of the line. Um, there is an adjustment, I think, in the plan. It currently says a six-inch main, um, which they recommended going up to an eight-inch main. So they'll work that out with the water sewer department. There was some discussion about whether or not it would be worthwhile to extend the, um, the sewer line from just before the American Legion all the way up the hill and around, um, which would negate the need to install septic fields, that's for the applicant to decide. It would reduce the minimum lot size, so if they chose to do that, there would be you know, big capital expense, but they could get more lots out of it. Um, so they may work that out and present a different proposal at another time that reflects that if they, if they want to. Um, the major concern um, of Jay Stevens, um, the engineer reviewing the proposal on behalf of the town, was that it's not clear from the plans where the septic designs fall in relation to the homes and in relation to the 250 foot setback to the river. Uh, the applicant agreed with the zoning board not to infringe upon that setback with the septic systems. Um, there, nowhere in the application are all those things in the same place. Further, in the application, the septic designs where they're noted seem to overlap where houses may go. There's a disagreement with, um, between the applicant and the town about whether or not the cluster subdivision regulations and the subdivision regulations would trump the zoning ordinance that requires the minimum lot size for septic systems, or whether the zoning ordinance would supersede the cluster subdivision regulations. So um, we're going to we're going to do some investigation about that, which may require legal advice. Um, and then the. Um, the applicant was very gracious to move the, set, um, the street light that's within the, um, near the cul-de-sac onto um, private property um, for their maintenance and expense. We appreciate that because the design um, is not always easy. We have um, a similar design on Stockdale and I think the Paris, and those parts aren't always easy to find. Um, trying to think what else. I don't know if you all remember any other no, I th comments. I, th I think that you've, you've hit the uh, you know, three things that, that, that jumped out at me from the, the meeting were, were the, the, the water pressure issues or potential issues that the water department brought up that they've asked us to do pressure tests out of Silver Street as well as fire flow uh, tests to, to find out what they are. They, they, uh, I don't know what they are, but they, but they said that that is at the uh, outer limits of uh, system and they would, they would like uh, to test on that. So that's on our list to, to take care of it is the water pressure test as well as the water uh, fire flow test. Um, the, uh, again, a couple, couple issues that I guess we weren't, really weren't on, on the same page with, with, with the review from Mr. Stevens, one related to um, lot sizing. And, and when I did my review of, of the ordinance, the, that uh, the cluster regulations within the zoning are, are pretty specific about how, how to uh, deal with the lot size. And we have, we have under the cluster uh, sections uh, eight, seven, where we talk about lot configuration size and setbacks. And that appears to kick uh, the lot sizing requirement to uh, meet the state sizing and the state regulations for, for the density on, on the property. Uh, Mr. Stevens had, had a different approach at, approaching it from the subdivision regulations and, and where, uh, again, you, I'm sure you're familiar with the minimum lot sizing uh, by soil type in, in your subdivision regulation. And that, that wasn't the approach we took, but since the, the meeting we had this morning, I had the opportunity to look at that. Again, we had just gone on, on the basis of the the zoning ordinance was, was in charge, uh, but for sake of, of discussion, it is, it is um, 
I was surprised that, that the ordinance specifically addresses how to deal with the, the, a cluster subdivision. And so I have looked at that. We, we do meet the, the lot size and requirements under the subdivision regulation as well. So I think you're going to get Mr. Clark and Mr. Stevens and myself that regulation and we'll start a discussion and exactly. make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. That. So that, that was uh, uh, the numbers in the table here address individual lot size but under 11.1.4b, it says in the case of cluster subdivisions and it describes how a project we, we've gone through that and feel comfortable that we, we, we're there so we can certainly get, get the specifics to you on that. But then there's the concern of the septics overlapping with the home footprints as well. Yeah, and, and that, that was the third issue that was on, on my, my radar screen and, and um, I was a little confused from the standpoint that 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 is the, the, the the area that we've shown on our on our plans on your S2 in particular show a 4,000 square foot suitable area, which, which is a state requirement. And the state does not regulate uh, with the housekeeping within that. I mean, the subdivision regulations, you have very specific requirements on what you require under 10.11 non suited area system siting requirements, which doesn't require a 4,000 square foot area but tells you how to ensure that you do have those, those areas. So again, Mr. Stevens specifically said in his cover letter to Mr. Hensman, uh, we did not uh, perform a detailed review of the septic system information as that will be addressed by the NHDES Subsurface <coughs> Systems Bureau. So he immediately then got into a discussion about the subsystem systems bureau. So I, I, I think if we stick to the state reviewing the state information and the town reviewing the town information, we can, we can get through this a lot, a lot better. Um, Possibly. Nonetheless, I'm going to recommend that we don't not find it complete until the town and applicant are on the same page. Okay. I think I'd like to get input from obviously Mr. Kraft, but also the Nico concerning the lot size and interpretation in which trumps the other and has started regulations because it's a new thing in the interpretation. So I think Nico. I feel comfortable yeah. having legal yes, and, and again, that, that, if that's the my, my recent investigation would say that there is a conflict, that we, we apply to both interpretations. We, we comply with both interpretations. Okay. Uh, again, for example, what we did here, I had a chance this afternoon to show, uh, again, how these lots would be built. The state requires a 4,000 square foot area to be suitable. These are, for this type of soil, based on this test pit here, that you need approximately a system that's 200 feet square feet. That's what you need for a septic system. That 4,000 square feet isn't supposed to be designated for a septic system. It's an area on the lot that, that you've got a shot at doing a septic system. This is what we submit when we actually go to get a septic system approved that shows the same house that we show on the other plans, uh, but shows the actual footprint of the septic system and shows that there's plenty of room on the lot to achieve um, a septic system, a house, a driveway, three cars in the driveway, et cetera, et cetera. But again, this was just, uh, I, think, I think that got a little blown out of proportion today as far as how to, how to achieve, how to get these septic systems on each of the lot. Um, and as well, the, we talked about the driveways near the building setbacks. That wasn't something I was aware of, but as you can see, just by, <coughs> by pushing things around a few feet here and there, again, it's not an unsurmountable task to get uh, the driveways to meet, to meet building setbacks. So th this, is, this is more what you would see when you go for a septic design versus a subdivision. before hearing the report of the Technical Review Committee, and okay. since he will do his separate review and participated in that meeting. Um, okay. Yeah. Anyone on the board have any questions for the applicant? Uh, would any members of the public like to ask any questions? 
Thank you. you, you um, please state your, your name and address for our... Uh, my name is Regina Simmons. I live at 985 Portland Ave. And with all due respect to the presenters of the nine homes, I'm thinking that there's going to be nine new families but what about the people who already live there? That is a very small road leading to that subdivision. Those people have lived there for years. It is going to be a nightmare to the community, an absolute nightmare. In construction, and after construction, the traffic leading into that area is really going to impact the community. I don't think it's fair. Just because someone wants to put up a subdivision, their rights come before ours? I don't get it. Don't we have a say? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, please say again your name with your... Yeah, Flynn, 653 Silver Street. We live on the dead end. The home I live in, I've lived there since I was married 46 years ago. My husband's lived there all his life and his mother before him for all but the first five years of her life. We, um, the neighbors have all agreed that this is a good thing compared to what's been there. It's an improvement of the property. Um, somebody could have come in. I know somebody wanted to turn it into a wedding venue. Another person wanted to put a ton of condos down there. Um, and it's not nine houses, it's seven, because the other two lots is to be kept as open land. Um, we realize it's going to be an inconvenience for a while while it's being built, but we think it will be an improvement. So we, we've got three of us here right now that we've all agreed that we'd like to see this happen, and we've talked to many of the other neighbors, and we haven't heard anyone that's been against it. So. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm I was speaking to you. <laughs> I thought you were going to be I appreciate seriously it. impacted. Eventually, that property is going to be developed, and it, it could be in a lot worse could situation. Be 40 cars going up yeah. and down. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was being your champion, yeah. and I didn't I need to be. Sure, but seven, <laughs> seven private homes is a lot better than, you know, okay. 12 condos or 20. Well, I didn't think something. that we would approve of 12 yeah. condos either. They're the bosses. They Why do we have to approve of anything? <laughs> <laughs> but just so you know, that the, most of the abutters are in favor of this. Oh, okay. I stay corrupted. <laughs> Anyone else for the public comment? Yes, uh, Sonny. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sonny Forrest, Rollins Road. <clears throat> I'm going to try to explain this as nice as I can. Sure. We've, this will be the fourth major project in this town. The last three, in my viewpoint, have all left potential serious safety issues. Right, I'll start with Wentworth Street. Anybody that's been over to that Wentworth Street will tell you it's a horrible design. When you go downhill and go against two bulges in the road and have to turn around on somebody's driveway, it's poor. This past winter, when we had a deliberate session in town, I asked a select boy, how did this ever get through the planning board? The answer was, I don't know. Very unacceptable answer, my point. Right? But yet, we had to vote on it, or we were going to go to court. So I just caution you guys. The second one, the development up in Clement Road, 300 foot of site. To date, that has never been publicly told to anybody how they come up with that. And I've asked that question to more than one person. Still unacceptable. The next one, Bluens Project, Railroad Avenue, the parking lot back there. You're going to put a number of cars down that road that hasn't been seen in years. And on that road, we have a person that lives there that lives in a, hand, lives in a wheelchair. No consideration given to the residents. If you guys got problems and questions, don't be afraid to bring in outside engineering help. That's what they needed, and I think they really lacked on some of these decisions in the past. Now, this going forward, this short section of Silver Street down there is narrow. 
and it's not built very heavy, and now you're going to quadruple the, the traffic. You may want to consider taking that into part of the requirements of this development. That's what we really lack. We've given the farm away, in my opinion, in this town, and got nothing for it. <coughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Tom Ellis, 652 Silver Street. <clears throat> you don't know how much traffic there was when Dr. Bennett owned that place down there. It was cars, trucks, constantly coming in and out. Nighttime, daytime, you have it junk delivered at night so nobody would see it. So I don't think Seven House is going to add any more traffic than there used to be with Dr. Bennett down there. He had 53-foot trucks back and down the road, you know. I don't know if everybody saw it, but we saw it. So I don't think Seven House is going to be any more traffic than it used to be with all his dealings he had going on. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? I just want to make a comment, because I think there's a problem with public perception when it comes to planning and development in town. I think a lot of people would love to see nothing further ever get developed in Rollinsford, and lots of us live here because we love the rural character of this place and we want to maintain that. Um, and that's reflected in the master plan, and that's why we have a master plan. However, this body has to weigh that against also a property owner's statutory right to maximize the potential of their property within our regulations. So we allow subdivisions because we have to allow subdivisions because property owners get to maximize the value. So if you can fit a subdivision, you get to do that. The role of the planning board is to make sure that it fits the regulations and to hear from the public. So, so whenever these things happen, we, we put it in the paper and we notify the abutters and we let the public know because we want to hear from you. But what we need to hear from the people are traffic concerns, safety concerns, aesthetic concerns, um, things that might impact property valuations or your water pressure next door or some other kind of impactful things like that. But in the end, you can't just say no to a subdivision because you'd rather not see a property developed. So sometimes that gets confusing for people because they like things the way they are and, and change is hard. Thank you very much. Can I add something else? Yes, sir, please. Since, since I live right there, I'm looking at that barn is an eyesore. I don't know how Dr. Bennett ever get permits to put all that up there, but I'd rather see the barn gone in a few nice looking houses there. And it's not, we live right there, so it's going to be open space next to our house. I mean, it could have probably been two, three more houses put in that open spot where they're going to have the open land. It could have been three, four more houses, I bet you, to squeeze, squeeze it in. I'd rather look out my side window and see an open spot and look out my back door and see the barn gone in the nice house. You know, if you, you know, it's been a circus. Thank you very much. You know. All right, so I, I, I believe that's the issue with me, whether or not we find the application. Uh, you have to suspend here. here. You have to suspend it. So I was asking. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyone? Second. All right. Uh, all in favor say. Um, all in favor of suspending the hearing uh, until the next planning board meeting, until which we haven't set yet. The next planning board meeting, which we haven't set yet. Say aye. 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 Those opposed. All right. The ayes have it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Brigham and Mr. I know you're very anxious to move forward. I know your plan's been thoughtful, but there are some issues here we need to look into, and we'll see you at the next planning board meeting. So we work behind the scenes a little bit to try to get 
clarification on the, the issues that are at hand and then resume hopefully at the next meeting. Is that you have my email address and feel free to touch base with me I and I will certainly likewise do the same. Just so I know exactly what to do, I don't want to stop me. Um, come to the next planning board meeting. We'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> so is, the, is there a deadline that we need to have the issue resolved beforehand or new, new materials to you? Or? I think um, the only, I think the big consideration with that regard is how much time Mr. Krebs would need to, um, and also Mr. Stevens, to review revisions. Um, open to suggestions, maybe the regular 20 days. I don't know. I think that clarification would have a lot more than the last time as well. Well, that's kind of like what we're trying to, you know, I think he's going to need that information ahead of time to. Um, maybe Mr. Stevens is going to make a termination on he and Mr. Clark and I are going to see, you know, we're going to read through regulations and read what he is going to send over to us about what he thinks applies. And we'll review that, and if it comes to legal, then we'll get a legal opinion about it. And um, that will play into the resolve in-house. I mean, I'm not embarrassed about it. I, I would like to voice that I'm very appreciative of you working with the town. And also, Change is inevitable. Change has to happen, and we appreciate that you're also keeping the town's interest in, in mind with the open space. We've heard from your abutters. Um, if you need to mention previous history of the property, there's been activity there, and obviously, as I stated earlier, there could have been a lot more development on this piece of land. You know, I'm trying to do the right thing. I, I think these that's appreciated. I think when you when you see the whole case, it'll be clear, and you won't need to bring an attorney. In. I think Jay missed something. He's more Maine than New Hampshire, and I, I think it'll be easier to clarify than, than it could be. Yeah, I'm pretty confident on that. Um, have, having seen what he did this afternoon for research, it's pretty clear. So we, we have to get that stuff to you quickly so that we can keep that moving. We need the water line, water and the hydrant test to make it go along with get that set up. And that's certainly, yeah, uh, by the next meeting, we should be able to have that data. I'm working with, what was his name, Ray, from the water department? Mm -hmm. right. I've already had a long discussion with him. He showed me where the sewer ends. I think it's, um, and we talked about booster pumps to get pressure up in different avenues, and it, that's resolvable. And I think when, when the meeting is all done, this will be resolved. So I, I don't think, um, I don't know if there's any major showstopper. It's just another delay, but mm -hmm. we, we it's a process. But, the, but it's enough missing where you can't accept jurisdiction with the plan, basically, is, is what you're saying, because of the water pressure or the... To my mind, the whole situation about septic and lot size is... So, Jay... Is, it could be a substantial revision. So, you know, we got to resolve that one way or the other to know what version of the plan is approved, I think is the big sticking point. I think, yeah. Jay misspoke. I think you'll see that. So that'll, that'll be easy. And we appreciate all everyone's uh, comments from the public. Okay. We're, we're your neighbors too. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.
been an alternate and what's for a very long Richard, time. Richard, Richard, Richard Fogg. Oh, okay. Richard Fogg. Okay. And I'm Wendy's. And and Wendy's sent this thing. Oh, Is everybody through Wendy? Yeah. Okay. So I, I apologize for that. Is everybody? Is everybody? Is everybody acquainted now? <laughs> Okay, so I'm. So are we approving minutes? No, I'm seconding the motion that we approve the minutes of the meeting. Who's first to hand? I, mean, um, I think Glenn did. Oh, okay. no, I'm sorry, no. Kevin did. So, okay. All in favor of approving the uh, main minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Um, there is one piece of correspondence, actually. Um, it's a dredge and fill application um, from their wetlands program manager um, at the Wetlands Bureau of the Department of Education. Um, they are notifying the town um, and the planning board and other parts of the town about, um, this is a dredge and fill application, and basically it's notice of um, the property on the corner of um, General Sullivan Way and Portland Avenue. They have a shallowly buried, essentially, piece of metal, but it's a communication device for Skyhaven Airport. And it needs to get replaced, and so um, they have an easement, and they're going to access that from General Sullivan Way, and they've been in contact with the property owner, and they're going to, at some point soon, dig that up and replace it. So they're notifying of that, us of that. Um, I have the full application. Anyone who wants to take it home and read it is welcome to. I, I also have it electronically, and I will forward it to you. Yeah. That might be easier to read. As I said, there's no action they have to be taken. They to access this. They do. Okay. And there's, as far as they from, the buyers know the property owners around. There's a million articles. It's an easement. It's an easement. I'm just trying to follow this, but um, uh, airport in Manchester. <laughs> It's, a, like, it's, it's some kind of beacon or radio device that helps them, um, helps the instrument panels locate where they are. Oh, you know, okay. Guess, when you're flying around, it's hard to know and you're seeing just big sky where you are in relationship to the ground. And okay. that, that thing's supposed to help with that. And that's about all I know. Okay. <laughs> um, perhaps when the airport came to be. Yeah, in the flight you know, path of. Yeah. You know, not peas and somewhere that was okay by the FAA for them to use. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I will forward you the email, and if any of you have any questions, you'll see in the email the contact for the project, and feel free to reach out, and if you wouldn't mind sharing whatever you learned from that, if you're so inclined. So it just isn't needed anymore? No, they need it. They have to replace it because, you know, I think it's just aged out or deteriorated or what have you. So is it next time we're really studying the yes. last question? Yes. So the, um, the next scheduled date is the day right after Labor Day. So we just need to decide whether... So what, what are folks' preference? Would you rather... After Labor Day, Tuesday after Labor Day, or push it back a week? What would people like to do? Um, I was just thinking of that too as I said that. And I was going to say, and with with the next meeting, I think you're probably going to have more of the locals in my neighborhood. I mean, we had the folks that lived right next door, but we didn't have a lot of folks that lived the Four, five, six houses around, and I think you're going to see that uh, next time. 
if there's possibility that the, uh, the plan will be more complete. So we would be part of the tent. Second, Chief. Mm -hmm. That's fine, yeah. So, motion. Ken and Richard, does that work for you? It works out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We had a motion to move the next time we'll meet for the tent. Second. Anything else on the agenda, right? All right. And, and so we did have two months off. I think we're going to earn our uh, two months off in this project. Uh, it'll be pretty shortly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Um, if, unless you want to hear public comment. I'm sorry. That's okay, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> I had a rebuttal to what you said about change. And I got no problem with change. But those three issues that I gave you are serious safety issues. I really think you need to go to that road because you're not going to get an ambulance by an oil truck or a propane truck in the event that it's needed. That the road is narrow. So when I asked the question, how did it ever get through the board? I didn't appreciate the answer. I don't know. There had to have been somebody that was there. And the only person that was there in all three of these projects that I named was Krebs. I realized, you people want the more residents like me. You don't hold engineering degrees. You know, if it don't make sense, bring in outside help. That's what you're there for. It makes your decision easier. Would you agree with that, Mr. Chairman? You know, Sonny, I'll say that I had a concern about the uh, federal property sight line and the sight line in, the, in, the, in the, our regulations said that it was there. I mean, I, so. Nobody said how it was conducted, and that's what I was trying to find out. So if you're talking about the one on Clement, correct? Yes. Right. All right. So that road comes out to the side of Clement. Even if you stood right at the edge of the pavement, in which you'll never see a, a, a set of eyes, you're going to be back at least, what, six, eight feet from the side of the road if, if you're coming to the stop sign? You should have a clear line of sight left and right 300 feet. Superman, maybe, but not any of us here. That was a major issue of concern at the uh, at that, at that But it was never explained. I even asked the question, how was it conducted? It's all done. That's all I kept getting. I, I think but there was a mayor. review on that. There was a review on that because that was such a that was a bone of contention, and it was addressed because it was addressed. It was it was an obstacle that would have to stop the project. So I can't cite specifically how that was determined. But see, it was done by some outside concern, but nobody ever sat down and said, this is how it actually went down. So, I mean, I look at it objectively, 300 feet, you'd be, you'd be really pressed to do 100. So, Sonny, I hear you, and I absolutely agree with you that all these concerns are valid concerns and things that we need to hear and consider. And we do have Jay Stevens, um, an engineer, a qualified civil engineer, to review these projects at the applicant's expense for exactly these reasons. And we have technical review committee now, which I'm not sure was in place at that time, so that all department heads and the engineer and Tom Clark can all sit down with Mr. Krebs together and we can have these conversations and work these things out and ask those questions. So you know, part of my response you to you is we're getting better. We're well, learning and getting better. Well, I, I brought them three up just as a highlight because I'm seeing some faces here that I haven't seen before. No disrespect. But like I said, you know, you're residents like me, you're human beings. I don't know, maybe you guys are all engineers from some... Human being. <laughs> but we do have due diligence and we ask the people that are qualified. When someone, when, when someone makes uh, or performs a duty for us that, you know, because it's an ex they're an expert in the field, and they're putting their name and their license behind that, me as a, as a, as a property owner, and I look at that, and this is a man that should know this, and he's willing to put his name on it, and he, he reviewed a certain aspect of a, of, a, of a development that we specifically said, does this fit? He gave them all of our paperwork, and the man comes back and he says it fits. I accept that. If it's a if it's a obstacle that must be addressed and it gets addressed and we move past it. Wouldn't you ask, okay, why does it why does it fit? 
I mean, may, maybe I'm just more curious than what you might be, but just because he says it's okay, why is it okay? Because that's not my background, and, and I, I appreciate your points too. What? Safety obviously being a concern. Um, but he may explain to me, and, and I'm not even qualified to judge, as it's not my field of expertise. Well, but he could explain to you why he at least thinks it's okay. And that's what, you know, on that line of sight issue, that's never been done. All I had heard all the time was, it's done, it's okay, it's good. Okay. You know, and I found that to be totally unacceptable as a resident of this community. I think that might be a symptom also of this board not being the right kind of, um, having the right kind of expertise to say exactly what was done, except to say that an expert certified that it qualified. And, and so that there's no way to, you know, remember and then understand their process and know except to say that... I would have put that onus onto the applicant because he had his engineer all the time here and he wouldn't even step up. He'd clam right up. So, I mean, all that doing was just infuriating me even more. I'd want an answer. It's that simple. Explain it. I wish we had more people like yourselves come to these public meetings. We have these public hearings for this purpose. I'm just a home property owner like you are in town, and I, I want the best for town. Well, I'll give, input from I'll give you a public. prime example. I was sitting in this room when C and J put was getting their okay to put up their third building. I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. They spent more time talking on what type and where the trees were going to go. You know, I mean, they were really picky, the planning board. I mean, right down to the tree. And then I look at these other three projects and I want to say, geez, what did they do, get approved at the local gym mill? And I'm not saying it to be sarcastic, but you need to view it from my point. But it's horrible improvement. And I think that road's going to come back to get us. Well, the reason I say that is it's going to get pushed. Either the snow's going to narrow it up, and we, as taxpayers here in town, are going to be forced to widen the road. When, in fact, oh, you guys are going to say no. Make the road to the right width. It's not up to you to design it. We can only do what the regulations say we can do. So, so the road regulations are whatever they are in our regulations. If it, you know, 20 feet qualifies, we can't say... 20 feet might be great, but what about the, what about the downgrade? That's I, what, I don't disagree, but you know, that's working on regulations. So we can't hold them to something that's not in the regs. I don't think, I, I, I don't think that's in the regs. I mean, that's just a plain, outright safety issue. I, I really would invite you all to take a look at that road to see how, you know, I spoke to a couple of residents over there that I bumped into, and they said, the road is really narrow and horrible. We love living over there. So, I mean... Are you talking about Silver Street, the, the dead end? What do you... No, I'm talking about Wentworth. Wentworth. Yeah. You know, that probably, that road should have been probably moved in a different location and, you know, there again, that's up to an engineer to figure it out. Just keep talking to us. Yeah, well, I'm not an engineer. <laughs> no, but, you know, you keep us grounded and you'll keep, you know, make it, helping us ask the right questions. We're all in this together. You, you really got to take a hard look at the end of Silver Street, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think the base of the road is going to take the heavy pounding that's going to be done when the equipment starts rolling in and out of there. Probably because we're finding that most of our roads don't have the base that they should have. But if it fits regulation, if it fits regulation, we cannot deny if it fits regulations on personal preference or opinion. And we can't there hold again. up their construction because our road isn't up to some standard. You well, know? There again, lay it right into them. Say, hey, if you damage the road, you're going to be responsible to repair it. I mean, it, it's like in the, in the spring. If you've got a heavy truck going across the road when the frost is coming out, Without your approval, and you damage it, you're going to have to go back and, and fix it. And we have done that. Yeah. I want you to know, we, we have done that. It happens. You're right. It happens. And, and when we notice and people bring it to our attention, we do do something about that. So keep talking to us. <laughs> I just have a question. You keep talking about regulations. Are they the town's regulations or are they the state's regulations? 
have to follow all the regulations. No, but, but I'm saying that you're going according to the regulations. Which regulations are we discussing? Mostly at hand are the zoning ordinance and the subdivision regulations. Which are in place. Which are rollins for documents. Okay. Is it is it not that we we can't overstep the state regulations? We can make them harder, but we can't make them easier. Correct. Is that the way that it works? Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Thank you. And so, when you all have recommendations and think that our regulations aren't what they maybe should be or could be to fit the best interest of the town. The subdivision and site review documents can be revised by the planning board. The zoning ordinance is a one shot per year on the ballot revision. So, you know, that's a slower process. And, and you know, but it all takes work. And on to this be point. honest, when it's on that when it's on that piece of paper, not enough people know what that regular what what you're changing enough to make a decision that really, whether it should or shouldn't? So we have public hearings before it's on the ballot, because we're required to. And so it, it's, it, it points again to the need to have people to come and learn about what's going on and engage and ask us questions. Exactly, and feel about exactly. Things. You know, it, it comes down to you, more people need to be informed make an informed decision, and if they can't bother to come to a public hearing for an informed decision, then don't sit back and be a chair quarterback and say, this is the way it should have been. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One thing you guys do, though, that, you, that your hands are tied, I've been told, is when you make a zoning ordinance change and go to the public for the ballot, you're only allowed to put just so much explanation. Mm -hmm. That, that is wrong. I mean, now I know what you're going to say, but I don't know why you couldn't have a, a secondary flyer to fully explain it in normal terms. We're actually required to have, at the deliberative session and on election day, the full text of the revision. Yeah. So just know that. Like, you know, you, yes. can't, you can't, you know, the cost and space of putting a big revision just isn't practical. So a summary. Of, of what the change is and what pointing to regulation 8.2.10 sure. or what have you is, is the best that we can do. But but rest assured that the full change is always available in paper form at the public hearing ahead of time, deliberative session, and at the ballot. But nobody looks at Explain that. it. Sometimes exactly. just a simple layman's explanation does a world of good because some people have voted for stuff and they actually admitted after they found out, I went the wrong way. Well, right, and point taken, which is why I'm really trying to work with the select board to improve, like to continue the voter guide and improve it and get it, you know, to, that it really is the point of the voter guide, so that everything on the ballot is in layman's terms for the people, so that they understand what the implications are, what the consequences of voting or not voting for it might be. Absolutely. You know, we know that it's not really layman's English. But, you know, so public hearings. Water guide. I think you've got an opportunity in front of you to make something nice, but you don't need to give a final away just because certain things don't meet the criteria and say, oh, wave it. And that was a great thing that I thought that the previous planning boards did. Oh, we can wave this and we can wave that. Wrong. So just so you know, when it came from the zoning board, they had to come back to, you know, to make a second presentation to make changes. So um, I know that uh, the zoning board took a hard look at it. And I'm sure this board will take a hard look at it, too. It's full oh, I'm of sure. fresh minds we have on the board. Well, you and I went at it. I mean, in a nice way. But we were in disagreement on a lot of things. How was that? Yes, sure. They went, the zoning board did go around and around and around about it because they didn't want to set the precedent That's of allowing said, yeah. one, per, one lot to go to the 200 feet when everything else was, two, what it says, 250. That's the first time that's happened. It goes way back in time to when Fred Barry wanted to build on the side of, you remember that? Yeah. No, they wouldn't let him encroach. Now, we're talking going back many years. 
That was back in the what? 25 30? years, 25, 30 years ago. Well, it was more than he that. wanted to put in a shared housing thing. Yeah, well. He didn't want to call it a nursing All right. Yeah. They would like to go. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll put in a motion again to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. In a second. Second. Uh, Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. 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 Th